Well, g'day guys, it's Sam here, and this week we're going to be upgrading the factory diff centers to e lockers. Yes, that's right guys, welcome back to another episode of Built Not Board Extra. You're probably hearing my voice, so I'm a bit sick at the moment, so sorry about that. But yeah, like I said, this week we're going to be doing the diff centers. Now what I've got here is one of the old centers. This is uh, the rear, so it's the factory LSD. So I've just pulled the centers out at the moment from the diffs. You just do that as per your factory uh, specifications. Um, and then what we've done already is replace the front center for the new Harrow E-Locker. Now with a four wheel drive, one of the best upgrades that I think you can do is a set of diff locks. A lot of people don't understand that when you put your four wheel drive into four wheel drive, you're not actually getting true four wheel drive. You're only locking the front and rears together. So if you go up a hill or something and you do get two opposing wheels in the air, they are gonna spin and you're not gonna go anywhere. So set of diff locks, what that does is lock side to side um, motion. So the wheels will lock and you'll get true four wheel drive. So the boys at Harrop um, have hooked me up with a set of their Eaton E-Locker. Now, in my opinion, that is probably the best type of locker you can go with. They're real simple. All you need is a 12 volt supply to make them work. So I think we'll get started with that. As you can see, both the centers are out and I'm gonna show you guys how to do the rear and we'll take you through that now. All right, just before we start tearing this thing apart, there's a few critical clearances that discs need to be in line with. Um, one of them is the backlash, so I just wanted to measure that before we pulled it apart because I am going to be using the same ring and pinion. All we're going to change is the actual diff centre and the carrier here. So I'm checking the backlash here. It should be between 0.15 and 0.2 of a millimetre. So here we've got about, it's almost three. This is the rear diff. The front wasn't too bad, but this rear one's got a bit more play in it because of the wear. So just keep an eye on that. When it goes back together, we make sure we get it within those requirements. All right guys, so we've got the bearings pressed on now and we have pulled the ring gear back up onto the center using some 263 Loctite as well and torqued it up into 142 Newton meters. Now I've just dropped in the center um, back into the carrier. I've also drilled the hole as well. So I've checked this is the top of the diff here. I'm gonna run a hole inside the casing, actually drill from the top. I'm gonna throw some rags and stuff in there to protect the pinion, make sure none of the swarf and that goes inside when you do that. It's an 11.5 millimeter hole, but just check your manual. Um, probably the time you're watching this video, it may have changed, so just refer to Harrop's installation manual and it tells you the size there, but on this particular model, it's the 11.5 millimeter hole. So there's a little um, seal here, I'll we'll have to pop that through. While we put the caps on, there's this little bracket here that needs to go in to actually support the electromagnet for this thing to work. Now while I'm talking about this, it's a good idea to see how these units actually work. A lot of guys have lockers and they don't understand the mechanics behind it. And it's quite important when you're out in the bush to understand how these things operate to maximize the use out of them. So how these e-lockers work is pretty much when you put a 12 volt um, power to this here, it energizes this electromagnet which makes this cap um, pretty much clamp up to that. And as you rotate, this is the thing that people don't understand is when you hit that switch, you're not fully locked until these spider gears are driven in by this pin. So this little angled chamfer here is about half a rotation out and then it'll be fully locked. So then it's important that when you disengage as well, you gotta understand that. So if you're in a tight rut and you turn a corner and you come out of the, the drive you're doing and you hit the switch, you think you're unlocked. But you're not until that wheel has had the pressure taken off and the wheel has had about probably like half a rotation to be able to disengage that pin there. So just keep that in mind when you're using this out in the bush, how they actually work. So we'll get this bracket put in now, and then we've got to set the backlash after that. So the way to do that is using these, um, pretty much the caps actually have a thread cut into them. And like I said at the start of the video, we want to get the backlash at about 
1.15, 0.2 of a millimeter. Now, if you don't touch your pinion or anything, you just try and go back to that. But because we've replaced the actual carrier bearings as well, you need to get the crush on that first. So also in your manual, it will tell you what the preload needs to be on those bearings. As a general rule, you kind of want to um, tap these side gears in pretty tight to where they, they don't really want to move anymore and you can feel the pressure on that crown wheel and then you know that's where it's roughly needs to be set and then when you set your backlash you pretty much adjust the left side say half a turn and then the right side needs to match that so that's how you do it and we'll do that next and I'll run you through that as well. Alright guys now we've just spent the last half hour or so making sure this thing's set up but what you can see on the dial here is we've got the backlash at about 0.15 of a millimetre so that's back to the um, what we had at the start there and I've spun it 180 as well to make sure the other side of the crown wheel matches that. Both this, uh, the bearing caps here have been loaded up with the preload. We'll talk up these main carrier bearing bolts to 99 Newton meters but just make sure you refer to your installation manual for that as well. This is for the Nissan Patrol and then get it back into the diff there. So there we have it guys, a fresh set of uh, Harrop E-Lockers front and rear, she's twin locked, ready to go. Can't wait to hit the tracks now, she's going to be unstoppable. And if you have any questions or comments about the install or the lockers themselves, drop a comment below and I'll do my best to answer, otherwise hit up the boys at Harrop Engineering and they'll sort you out. But there's uh, a bit of work for me to do still on this thing, so uh, I'm going to get going guys, but thanks for watching, I'll see you next time, peace! <laughs> Oh hey, click the button to subscribe to my channel and you'll finally be happy.